coming up today. Well over 12 hours and counting. The two Koreas remain locked in a second round of high-level talks aimed at diffusing tensions on the Korean peninsula. The military standoff continues at the inter-Korean border. North Korea nearly doubles the size of its frontline artillery forces and deploys dozens of submarines. South Korea remains on high alert. First, a large explosion rocks a US military base in Japan. The Pentagon says no one was killed or injured. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello and welcome. It's 6 a.m. on Monday, August 24th here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom and you're tuned in to our early morning edition of Arirang News. Our top story this morning, it's been more than 14 hours since the two Koreas resumed their high-level talks aimed at cooling tensions on the peninsula. But no word as of yet on the outcome of the second round of discussions. For more, we have our presidential office correspondent Choi Yusun on the line. Yusun. Mark, it was roughly 14 and a half hours ago at 3.30 p.m. Seoul time Sunday that South Korea's National Security Advisor Kim Guan Jin and Unification Minister Hong Yong pyo returned to the negotiating table with North Korea at the truce village of Panmunjom. Now, we still don't know whether there's been any progress at the meeting, which is also being attended by North Korea's top military official Hwang byung so and the ruling party secretary Kim yang gun Officials here in the South remain tight-lipped as any unconfirmed leaks could negatively affect the ongoing negotiations. The presidential office in Seoul is known to be closely watching the situation. Mark? Yeah, the tensions, of course, bubbling following the recent exchange of artillery fire between the two Koreas and that issue uh, probably dominating those talks. And uh, you, son, what are the, the key differences the two sides can't seem to agree on? Well, for starters, Seoul is demanding Pyongyang apologize for the recent landmine blast in the demilitarized zone that left two South Korean soldiers seriously injured. Seoul is also seeking an apology for the latest artillery fire that triggered the escalation of tensions, as well as a promise of preventive measures. North Korea denies responsibility for both incidents, and uh, North Korea wants the South to stop its anti-Pyongyang broadcast, which resumed after the landmine incident. The two sides may have also exchanged views on non-political, non-military issues such as resuming reunions of families separated by the Korean War. It's likely North Korea has urged the South to stop its annual military exercises with the U.S., which it considers a war game and sought ways to resume inter-Korean tourism and other economic projects that were suspended after a series of North Korean provocations. Now, it's difficult to predict whether the marathon talks will bring about a substantial outcome, considering the fact that the North has neither apologized nor even expressed regret for its torpedoing of South Korean warship Cheonan and shelling of the South's Yeonpyeongdo Island back in 2010, which together killed 50 South Koreans. Well, that's all I have for now. We'll still have to keep an eye on what's on the latest, and I'll be back with more updates in our next newscast at 12 at noon, Seoul time. Thank you very much. That was our Chae Sun reporting there. Now, North Korea is continuing to strengthen its military readiness in spite of the ongoing talks at the border. South Korea also remains on high alert for any pro possible provocations from North Korea. Connie Kim reports. Military tensions remain at the highest level despite the high-level inter-Korean talks at the truce village of Panmunjom. South Korea's defense ministry said Sunday the number of North Korean combat-ready soldiers on the front lines has doubled compared to before the start of high-level talks. In addition, 50 North Korean submarines, about 70 percent of its fleet, have left port and remain undetected by South Korea's radar system. Seoul's defense ministry said the rate of North Korean submarines vanishing from radar is the highest since the Korean War broke out and may be an attempt to gain the upper hand during the high-level talks or preparation for another provocation.
South Korea remains on alert for any possible provocations from North Korea, especially as its propaganda campaign continues with all 11 loudspeakers. Responding to news that North Korea has strengthened combat readiness, Seoul immediately deployed a multiple rocket launcher and destroyers. Six South Korean F-16 fighter jets originally deployed to take part in an exercise in Alaska also returned home Sunday ahead of schedule. The South Korean and U.S. military remain on the second highest level of their five-level WatchCon threat alert system. WatchCon Level 2 is issued in the case of imminent threat from the north. The Allies are utilizing their full arsenal of reconnaissance satellites, planes and other military assets. Military officials remain vigilant of any unusual movements from North Korea as Pyongyang has history of launching surprise attacks after agreeing to dialogue. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Now the world is watching closely as the two Koreas remain locked in that second day of marathon talks. While some say the high-level talks should diffuse tensions for the time being, others think uh, relations will quickly sour again before too long. Hwang Sung-hee reports. In a statement on Saturday local time, UN Secretary General Pan Ki-moon welcomed the high-level talks between the two Koreas, encouraging both sides to use the opportunity to pave the way for de-escalating tensions on the peninsula. The UN chief called on the parties to redouble efforts to resolve their differences through dialogue, while refraining from taking any unnecessary measures. Foreign press are also closely following the marathon talks. The Washington Post reported that the resumption of talks for a second day have temporarily eased concerns about tensions on the peninsula. The Associated Press said it's still uncertain whether the two Koreas will be able to diplomatically resolve tensions, which it views as being the highest in recent years. Some Japanese media expressed skepticism about Pyongyang's intentions, referring to speculation that the regime will fire a long-range rocket in October. Experts in South Korea are more optimistic about Seoul and Pyongyang's efforts. They say that the Koreas will at least reach an agreement to ease military tensions, with some even speculating that joint efforts will be made by the two sides to maintain this unusual momentum and facilitate an inter-Korean summit. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. The U.S. State Department has reiterated Washington's firm commitment to South Korea's security amid escalating tension in the region. State Department spokeswoman Gabrielle Price said the U.S. is carefully monitoring the situation on the Korean Peninsula. She said the United States will continue to coordinate closely with Seoul and remain steadfast in its commitment to defend its allies. U.S. President Barack Obama was said to have been briefed on the latest developments over the weekend. Now, over the last few days, North Korea has threatened to wage an all-out war against the South, while at the same time reaching out to Seoul for talks. For a look at what might explain Pyongyang's contrasting behaviour, Kim Hyun-bin reports. Pyongyang's proposal for talks was unexpected, especially in the wake of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's order to prepare for all-out war. Our supreme commander has issued a quasi-state of war for our troops on the front lines. Soon after the announcement, Pyongyang proposed high-level talks with Seoul. The following day, the two countries' security heads met for several rounds of talks, very different from Pyongyang's behavior in the past. Some experts say that North Korea has been overwhelmed by the South's counteractions. After the mind blast, masterminded by the communist regime, South Korea resumed its anti-Pyongyang broadcasts for the first time in 11 years which experts say the North fears most. North Korea then fired off heavy artillery shells across the border, targeting anti-Pyongyang propaganda loudspeakers set up by the South, which Seoul countered with over three times the force. Experts say the strong counteraction taken by Seoul has been the impetus for the recent behavioral changes of North Korea. Experts also say that North Korea is hesitant to act because of the annual Korea-U.S. joint exercises WRG Freedom Guardian currently taking place. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Now, evacuated residents living, living near the border with North Korea have been welcoming the two Koreas' decision to hold these high-level talks. The leading member of a village in Yeoncheon County says residents there hope the return 
to their daily lives and are waiting to hear news of a breakthrough at the meeting. Around 300 residents living in Yonchon, Paju and Gimpo County in Gyeonggi-do province were evacuated to an emergency shelter. As we can see there, this happened on Saturday as a precautionary measure. Uh, this came as North Korea had issued an ultimatum to South Korea for it to halt anti-Pyongyang loudspeaker broadcasts. The South is continuing to blast the messages across the border despite the talks in Panmunjom. North Korea state media has been spreading rather a warped version of South Korea's reaction to the current inter-Korean tensions, saying South Koreans are terrified of the prospect of a war breaking out. Pyongyang's main propaganda website has been falsely reporting that the South soldiers are abandoning their barracks and young men are desperately trying to evade conscription. It also wrongly states South Koreans are stocking food supplies and that some are even leaving the country causing airfares to surge. North Korea has also claimed that some one million young North Koreans have signed a petition to join the army amid the heightened tensions on the peninsula. Contrary to these reports, South Koreans are going about their day-to-day -day lives as normal. Now, in other news, there has been an explosion at a US military base in Japan. Reports say the blast occurred a little after midnight local time at the U.S. military facility in Sagamihara, a prefecture on the outskirts of Tokyo. Now, videos on social media, which you can see one of now, show the site of the explosion on fire with some smoke rising from it. The Pentagon says there have been no reports of injury. Firefighters have been dispatched to put the fire out and to prevent its spread to nearby buildings. The building that blew up was reportedly used to store petroleum products and ammunition. The cause of the explosion is not yet clear. Criticism is rising within Japan following Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's war end anniversary statement earlier this month, which failed to offer a clear apology for the country's colonial rule and past aggression before and during World War II. Osaka City Mayor Toro Hashimoto said on Sunday that Japan must clearly express feelings of remorse and apology to Korea and China who were victims of Japanese invasion. The Japanese daily Sankey Shimbun reports that Hashimoto said Japanese politicians should continue to offer apologies adding that it was not acceptable for the Abe administration to try and justify Japan's past wartime atrocities. Now, efforts by top conglomerates to ease the unemployment rate in Korea failed to create many new jobs in the first half of the year. However, with both Samsung and Hyundai unveiling ambitious employment plans, there is optimism the situation may improve in the second half of the year. Kim Min-ji has more. Just over 8,200. That's the number of jobs Korea's top 30 conglomerates added in the first six months of the year. Market Tracker CEO Score says among 253 affiliates with comparable data, just over 1 million were employed as of the end of June. That represents less than a 1% creation of new jobs. The country's largest automaker, Hyundai Motor Group, added the most number of jobs at almost 5,500, up almost 4 percent from a year ago, and increasing its total number of employees to just under 150,000. Korea's retail giant Shinsegae Group ranks second, adding 3,600 jobs, followed by Hyosung Group, Korea's leading textiles and heavy machinery maker, which added more than 1,000 employees. Conglomerates in the shipping, construction and steel industry saw a decline in workers due to dire business conditions and restructuring. Korea's major shipbuilder, Hyundai Heavy Industries for One, saw a decline of 4.2% or 1,600 workers. Overall, the nation's largest conglomerate, Samsung Group, had the most employees at over 230,000, followed by Hyundai Motor Group. Also in the top five are LG Group, Lotte Group and SK Group. Those top five employ a total of over 610,000 workers, or 61 percent of all employees at the top 30 conglomerates. Now there is optimism that the figure could start rising in the latter half of the year. 
Samsung Group is scheduled to hire 30,000 workers over the next two years, while Hyundai Motor Group has also unveiled plans to hire 10,000 workers this year. Kim m i n j i Arirang News. Well, those are the stories we've been following on this Monday morning here in Seoul. We'll keep you updated on any developments regarding the inter-Korean talks up at the border. For more of the latest, so don't forget to check out our website, arirang.com forward slash news. Have a great day. Goodbye.